Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the HDMI output project on the KCU116 board, the Kingtest UltraScale Plus evaluation board. Create the project. Select the board, the KCU116 that we are going to work on. Xilinx predefined all the IOs and components that can be used on the board in the board file. So once the project is opened, we can create the block design. For the purpose of configure the uh, HDMI encoder at output, we need the micro brace and the I square C controller to configure to initialize the HDMI encoder. So we create the micro brace block in the block design, set it in the microcontroller mode. We don't need the debugging. Let the system automatically connect all the IOs and necessary blocks. There's a clock wizard that we are going to use as the general clock of the whole design. We need the uh, 300 meg differential clock input. And we reconfig the um, clock wizard with 100 meg output for the micro brace and reserve a 110 megahertz for later. For the purpose of the I2C initialization, we need the ASIC to I2C controlling block. The KCU116 HDMI I2C is not on the main bus, so we are not going to use the board predefined I2C IO. Instead, Previously, we defined the HDMI I2C pins in a separate file. We can bring in that file into the project. And we also add the constraint of the pins definition. Now we bring in the module and connect the ASIC to I2C output to this block for the purpose of connecting the IO pins at the board. For debugging purpose, we also bring in a UART ASIC to UART interface and use the microcontroller printout function. Just use default connections. To add video to the HDMI output, we use our own text generator, which is the color bar. This text generator has 24 bits RGB output. We can let the system automatically connect the ASIC bus On the KCU116 board, the HDMI connection is different than the Zinc evaluation board, where only 16 pins are used here, so the video mode has to be YC as defined in the ADV7511 encoder. So it's used the 422YC mode. For this purpose, we need a color conversion 
to convert the text generator RGB into the YPRPB mode. And the RGB to YPRPB conversion is using the ASICS stream. So we need to bring in the video I.O. to ASIC stream interface and the ASIC stream back to video I.O. interface. All the blocks are available from Vivado by default. Now we need the second call wizard because the HDMI output using 74.25 as a pixel clock. If the first call wizard using 110 output to connecting to this call wizard, it's not able to generate the proper 74.25. That's why we need the 110 megahertz. Connect all the clocks and reset. Now connect the text generator to the conversion, the color conversion block. We can use the lock signal from the second clock wizard as all the uh, clock enable and reset signals for the video blocks. We also previously defined the HDMI pins on a separate file. So now we bring in that file. This file also converts the YPRPB444 into 422 format and the constraint to define the HDMI pins at the board. The video I.O. from the ASIC interface conversion can be directly linked to the HDMI output block. And then we create all the pins for the board connection. Just let the system finish all the automatic connection. And check. Ah, the video timing not connect on the output block. For the purpose of the video timing, you're not able to directly connect from the text chain. There is nine clocks delay on the RGB to YPRPB. So the V timing will be advanced. If you directly connect the V timing output to the ASIC stream to VIO conversion block, the ASIC stream data needs to be buffered for about a whole frame, which will overflow for the small FIFO in the block. So we need the extra video timing controller and use the slave mode 
of the uh, ASIC stream to VIO block. That feedback the clock enable signal back to the video timing controller so that the HDMI video timing will be slightly later than the ASIC stream data coming in. So we only need a small amount of FIFO to align the ASIC stream data and the output video timing. Now check everything looks fine. We can generate the block design. We need the wrapper to map all the pins to the I.O. of the board. Once it's generated, we can find the wrapper file from the block design subfolder and use it as a top file of this whole project. Now we can generate the bit stream. Once this is done, we will need to export the bitstream to Whitus to create the uh, software layer of the microcontroller block. Create a separate new folder for the Whitus so it won't mess up all your files. In the Whitus, we create a new application project. Use the export bitstream for the platform. You can see Whitehurst automatically create the Hello World project that will bring in all the UART and I2C definitions. Now we have some previously create software file. Basically, we will need the Hello World project to initialize the HDMI using the I2C. The I2C is using the EEPROM text example from the Whitehurst folder. We will only need the right sub-process to send the I2C register to the HDMI encoder. So paste all the files into the Writer's source folder. Refresh and create the project.
Once this is done, we will need to map the ELF file into the original FPGA project. This is going to be used as the uh, Michael Brace initialization memory file. Now regenerate the base stream. So once this is done, we can just use JTAG to load the base stream or use the write memory file to write the uh, MCS file into the SPI flash on the board. Open the hardware manager. Discover the board. and program the flash once it's done put from the flash now the I2C is programmed and there's an HDMI output. Wait a second, the color bars is different. You see the second bar is supposed to be yellow, now it's purple. There may be some color components mismatched. You go back to the design, text generator generates the color bar in RGB, but this one is RBG on the Xilinx component. So we need another block to shovel around the three different color components. We use our own video swapping block. So we just swap the G and the B channel. And then insert this block between the text generator and the VIO to ASIC converter block. Now we regenerate the base stream and program the board again. Put from the fresh. Now it looks perfect. Okay. That's all. Hope you enjoyed the video.